Yes. Otherwise, how is everyone? All is well. You're looking. Hi, everyone. On uh, this uh, special event for uh, uh, Human Rights Month, Female Wave of Change, hosted by our team in Kenya. And uh, our host today is uh, Jane Anyango, our global Female Wave of Change ambassador. We have some other great speakers, but Jane will uh, introduce them. Uh, what is important for now, uh, please, during the webinar, uh, all microphones will be muted. Uh, only the one who is speaking has it unmuted. Uh, please use the chat box for any questions or feedback that you have. Uh, and what is very important, this event is recorded. If you have a problem, then um, let us know because it is really important. But uh, by being part of this event, you give the Female Way of Change permission to record and use the recordings online. Okay, Isabel, over, no, Jane, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Ingen, and welcome everyone to this conversation. My name is Jane Anyango from Kenya. I live and work in an informal settlement in Kenya called Kibera. I work with women and girls. I work to ensure that women living in the informal communities have a voice to influence change on matters that affect their lives. I wish to welcome all of you to this, this discussion today. I can see we have Yvonne online. Thanks so much, Tebelo, for always being around for us. Africans, we love your leadership. Um, Regina Muturi was not able to join us today. She's a little busy and we really appreciate her leadership for taking this forward. We're going to be joined by Florence Sebo, who is the SDG Forum Coordinator for Kenya. We're also expecting Edita. She's a human rights, women human rights defender based here in Kibera, very vocal locally and globally. And I'm very glad that we are having this discussion today. So today is the 25th of September, the Global Action Day. So it marks three years since the adoption of the Agenda 2030 here in Kenya on the Sustainable Development Goals. I want to talk about engaging women and leaving no man behind. Women have always been left behind, especially women living in the informal communities. I am one of them. I know how much I have struggled to be where I am today. And if we are talking about women living in the informal communities, in Kenya, we form more than 60% of women living in the urban settlements. So I always say that without involving 60% of the population, then we are not getting anywhere as women. And that is why this conversation is very, very important for me. I also want to talk about women living with disabilities, especially in the informal settlements. So if we are talking about lack of engagement, lack of involvement, and we are talking about discrimination against women living in the informal settlements, meaning women living with disabilities in the informal settlements are facing multiple discriminations. So this is where I want us to have the conversation. If we are talking about not leaving anyone behind, which is the core principle of the Sustainable Development Goals, then where are these women? Where are women living in the informal settlements? So where are women living with disabilities within the informal settlements? How can we ensure that these women are engaged, that these women are not left behind in various development processes? So first I want to hear from you, Tebelo. And I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Please tell us how we want to ensure that the female wave of change is not leaving any woman behind. Thank you, Jane. Um, I think, um, firstly, congratulations on all the work that the team in Kenya has been uh, putting in place uh, since you know last week, and with today's session also taking place um, based on what I've seen, there's a lot of very positive impact um, that you have been doing and that will, you know, be taking place in Kenya um, under the ambit of female wave of change. 
I think the, you know, one of the key things that we always say in Female Wave of Change is that this is an organization to connect women from all walks of life. And, and what I've seen happening in the past week uh, from a Kenya basis is really testament to that, that it's not only women that are in the corporate world or that are leading NGOs, it's women, including young girls in schools. And one of the key thing, I, um, elements that you've highlighted is really around ensuring that we bring in as well uh, women with disabilities. Because as you correctly said, those, you know, from a, from a discrimination and operation point of view, those usually end up, you know, being at the bottom of the rung. And yet, when we engage with them, there are so many learn lessons that we're able to learn from them in terms of survival, in terms of economic empowerment, in terms of their rights uh, being, you know, being respected. So our challenge and opportunity that we have, particularly as the female wave of change, is that as we continue with the various programs that we have planned, you know, uh, now on human rights, next month on women empowerment, I think one of the opportunities to always be looking out and saying, in every event, in every session, in every conversation that we have, how do we bring women with disability into the space? Because by helping them, we're not only helping them as women, we're helping them as mothers of children. We're helping them as wives of men who have to deal with people with disability. We're helping them you know, as community leaders, because if they are able to show how using their feminine energy, they can be able to survive and be able to help their children and their partners, we're then able to build a better society and a better community. I don't know about Kenya and, 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 and other countries, but I've seen a lot of corporate, um, uh, you know, corporates in, in South Africa or corporations in South Africa where you are finding women with disabilities that have actually been employed to be able to gainfully make money for themselves. Because remember, people with disability will always tell you, do not feel pity for me. Help me and give me the skills for me to be able to do things for myself, for me to be able to uh, make a living for myself without having to depend on others. And I think if you remember that as female wave of change, that's something that we can be able to bring as a positive impact to the world. Thank you so much, Tebelo. Um, that was very informative. And I'm glad that you mentioned that these women are actually mothers. We also have mothers with children living with disabilities. We also have mothers, women who are wives, to men who are living with disabilities. Meaning as women, it's like we are surrounded by these people and we must take this conversation very, very seriously. So what can we do about women living with children with disabilities? Because when they come out there, nobody gives special consideration to these women. Like in Kenya, we have a bursaries, we have, you know, like job opportunities. And job opportunity is, uh, is a woman with a child living with disabilities is, uh, can access a, a job opportunity. Do we have those special considerations that this woman needs more time, like less time at work so that they spend more time with their children living with disabilities? You know, at times we think about all these things as human beings, but we never write them down so that we have some proper guideline to ensure that these women are not actually left behind. So it means that we are giving opportunities, yes, but at the end of the day, these women are also victimizing other people of their children elsewhere. What can we do to ensure that it's like, like it's a win-win situation for these women who have children with it, living with disabilities or who are married to men living with disabilities? Thank you for that, um, Jane. I think what one, one of the things we've started here with Female Wave of Change is allowing every female, every person that supports uh, change in the world using feminine energy a voice and i think we have an opportunity to use this platform to be able to hear those voices because as you rightly say it's not only about people with disabilities it's about people affected 
uh, by, by their family members, by their people in their communities who have disabilities. And I think the opportunity that we have at the moment is to continuously be challenging ourselves to say, how do we utilize this platform to be able to give a voice to those individuals. Obviously through companies you know, across the world and the various programs that companies have in terms of uh, bringing women with disability into, the, into space, we also have to start asking, you know, as you say, rightly questioning ourselves to say, do we consider mothers in the world of work who have children with disabilities? Because somehow, you know, we still sit and we want, we want to blanket mothers all the same, we want to blanket women all the same, and yet we know that so many people have different challenges. So I think for now, uh, as a start from a female wave of change, is one, being able to give them a voice on our platform, but secondly, in the communities and organizations we're involved to become their voice for them, to help them to be able to raise their voices because now we are aware. So our awareness gives us a responsibility to be able to take actions. Thank you, Tembelo. Uh, thanks so much. We are learning so much from you. And thanks so much, Ingun, for being part of this conversation. I'd like to talk to Yvonne. Yvonne, are you there? Hi, how are you? I'm good, Yvonne. How are you? How are you, Yvonne? All is well. All is well. I'm, I'm well. Oh, thank you so much. So uh, this is what I'm going to ask you. You know, we have, we have, uh, now we have the physical, we have different types of, of um, disabilities. And uh, we find that in most African, in most African countries, we still don't consider uh, disability when we are developing our, our different uh, in development. So you find that when the roads are being constructed, then we don't have the, the paths. We don't have the paths for people, like maybe people who are supposed to be using wheelchairs. And uh, at the end of the day, we also, in, even in sanitation, where the toilets, with the toilets we have, we don't have uh, the toilets that can be accessed with the, by people living with disability. So mobility becomes so much of a challenge, the buses that we are having. So what can you tell us about this? What can we improve as Africans to make sure that people who are living with different types of, of uh, disabilities are not really left behind because in our even in most education system we don't have like the brails you know in kenya right now we are trying to come up with a, a sign language uh, on tv like when the news is being read and things like that but i think it is still not enough what should we do now as Af africans to make sure that our uh, people living with different types of disabilities are well catered for uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Jane, for the opportunity uh, to engage. And I think it's a great opportunity for us as well as women to find answers to all the things that are bothering us. In my view, I think, um, as what uh, Dibolo has also shared, is that you need to formalize the things. You need policies. You need a legislative frameworks. But I also think you need to drive awareness because not a lot of people know about disabled people, whether they are women or men. They don't know their challenges, but also we don't share the stories of success. I'm a believer that um, the story is deep because it makes you think about things, it creates awareness, but it also awakes uh, that power within you. So. Let us also uh, share what other countries are doing. Over and above, creating awareness and sharing stories, I think a research as, well, as to what is it happening in other countries, how do they deal with infrastructure, how do they, they drive inclusivity so that everyone's rights are respected and everything happens uh, to even all those who are in need. So that would be... Um, my, my input uh, that uh, those three things they are powerful but we've already mentioned that nothing happens until we move let's take action one step at a time prioritize things have pilots and learn from our journey thank you Yvonne and I, I want to speak as a woman living in the informal settlement a woman from the slums 
So as women living in the informal uh, communities, our access to resources is very low. Many people believe that we don't have the capacity to manage resources. So mostly for us to get anything, it must pass through someone. As much as there's so much going on in the community, and I look at that as discrimination. So I'm trying to look at these women living with disability within the slums. If we cannot get resources to create awareness, to be able to bring the issues in the community together for people to tackle, how are we going to get change? Is it possible for us to get change if we don't involve the people with the real issues? And on this, I'm talking about the person living in the informal community. I'm, and I'm very specific about women living in these formal communities, they cannot access resources. So what is happening? How do we change things? I think you're raising a very critical issue because the temptation to go to people and say, here is the solution without understanding their problem is very easy. So that which we are doing right now, that's what should be happening in communities. Engage the communities, let them share their experience experiences, their challenges, and let them be part of the solutions as well as to what is it that uh, we can all work on to change their lives. But also, um, as I've said, that we've got a lot of people who are innovative and creative that even though they have limited resources, they try and make things happen. How do they survive? How do they sustain themselves? So get those stories uh, of hope. And that doesn't mean that uh, we're diverting from continuing to engage government as well, to invest and not to take um, issues of disability very light. So uh, in forging strategic partnerships, uh, getting the voice of those who are affected to be part of the solution, being creative and innovative and doing what exactly the female wave of change believes in, unity in diversity. This is not just the problem of those who are disabled. What about those who have different abilities? Let's all come together and unite in action and share solutions, explore things. Yes, as we stepping up as women and taking the responsibility that it's not enough just to talk because when there are these special days, we just engage and the following year is the same topic the same things, but nothing has happened. So I'm a believer that um, the universe applauds action over and above thought. So let's get into action and let's do something and let's own our journey and lead it uh, as women and be compassionate to each other, respect say, each other, love each other and work together. So. I believe in limitless possibilities. When you have a clear intention and when you center it, when you believe in it, things will happen. So, I mean, as Africa, we've been through so many things, but we had one belief that we will be liberated, whether it was in Kenya, it was Zimbabwe, Malawi, Anyway, so that, that power of belief is what liberated us. So I think now, uh, as I, you mentioned earlier on, both you and Tibelo, is that uh, being part of that economic revolution as women, that's very critical. So let us see also how do you contribute and not just to wait for things to happen to us and by other people, but let's lead the change and transform our lives. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Yvonne. What I've taken in that it was very powerful is like you have talked about the power of belief, which we should all have which I think is what, personally, that is what has brought me to where I am today. And I'm happy that I'm talking to global women today. You've also brought up very, two very powerful words, voice and partnership. And this is what female wave of change is all about. 
knowing someone who is doing something and being able to connect with them and use their power also to better your life. So thank you so much for your, your input and thank you for, for being with us here today. Tebelo, I'm coming back to you. Hi, Tebelo. Yeah, so I come back to you. So we have uh, heard about the power of belief and we've heard about voice and partnership. So how do we actualize this in Africa? I know we're already partnering, like I already know about you and I'm following you a lot and I'm glad that you're also following what I'm doing. But how do we make it like more practical? I didn't know that you were following me. I'm just knowing right now. So how do I get myself to the conversation so that I'm, I'm energized, I'm positive, I'm, I just feel that I'm being encouraged by somebody else. So what are we supposed to do? Thank you, Jane. I think, firstly, we just need to share the voice. Um, and you remember that as women, sometimes we wait for somebody else to give us the permission. And, and what I love about Female Wave of Change is about not waiting for somebody else to give the permission. It's about us taking you know, the permission um, in place. I think the, the opportunity that we have in Africa right now is an opportunity of starting to create a network um, of you know the various entities that we have in our in our countries as, as you as you and mommy Vaughn have spoken very strongly about creating partnerships but in creating those partnerships it's also about making each other aware of the partnerships that we've created because if we know of an organization in Kenya that you have partnered with that is looking after you know people with disabilities or is looking in terms of women from um, you know the grass to, grassroots areas it then also gives us ideas on looking for similar organizations in our country i still believe that there's a lot more that is female wave of change we need to start finding ways of sharing around the stories of success you know that we have um, uh, stories of success that we have in our countries and how do we take them further. Um, but as we were talking, you know, I, I was already sitting and thinking, I was like, oh, here are all abled women talking about women with disabilities. So I think it's also about us challenging ourselves to say, in future, when we have this kind of events, how do we bring the women that we say are being affected by these things into the system? But as a start, it's all these conversations. It's how we use our website. It's how we use our social platforms. It's how we use other ways that we're connecting to start sharing, you know, one story at a time. Um, um, and you say, you're asking, how can we be practical? And for Africa, I think it's about the challenge that says, what are the stories from Zimbabwe, Kenya, and South Africa that in a particular week we can be sharing that talks to these particular issues. So yes, Mami Vaughn is right. There's still a lot of talking, but even within that talking, there are some very practical, non-expensive, um, non-time committing things that we can be able to do. I mean, just look at us now, one hour that we're spending on this platform, all of us sitting in our own spaces, not having had to drive away, um, you know, to spend money. And it's about how do we teach other women to still be able to do the same. So we do have great opportunities and I fully agree with you that the more we, we share each other stories, the more we share stories of other women that we know in our spaces, the more the, the wave that we're looking to create is going to be created. Yeah, thanks Jane. Thanks so much Tebelo. Um, I'm learning so much and I'm glad we're having this conversation because listening to you and listening to, to Mami Vaughn, it seems as if this is a, like a cross-cutting issue when we're talking about women uh, like who are facing discrimination, when we're talking about the challenges that women are facing, then as if we are all like it, it cuts across and it's as if we are all yearning for information and we're also yearning, all yearning to have that voice and partnership. And I'm glad that the female wave of change is giving us this platform to be able to, 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 to talk, to share, and to harvest wherever we are able to, to harvest. So what are the next steps for Africa as far as female wave of change 
is concerned. I'm a very proud uh, global ambassador uh, for the way female women will change. I'm happy that I'm talking to you guys and I'm able to talk to people wider across, like beyond Kenya. Maybe that is why I'm not getting Kenyans on board because I'm a global figure. <laughs> I'm not really a Kenyan figure, but I'm told they are joining us shortly. So what are the next steps? How do we move forward? I think we are on the right steps, Jane, in terms of, um, you know, the leadership that we have from Ingun and, 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 um, and you know, the board. I think um, we also have an opportunity, and, we, and I'm glad that we're starting to do that now, that as an Africa team, to start engaging with each other on, as you said, practical activities that we can have in place. I mean, if I look at this, we've now had a South Africa, um, you know, online, um, or we've had an event that talks about human resources. Kenya has been, you know, doing the work. Zimbabwe on the 28th is also going to be having an online platform. So, so the more we have these kind of events, but also more importantly, I think we're now having an opportunity to align each, with each other so that the voice that's being heard from Africa, it doesn't sound like it's a very um, disintegrated, disintegrated voice, but it's an integrated voice that we're starting you know, to share with each other. So practically, and, and, and Ingun, you're going to be surprised by this, but practically we're looking at at, um, at, at putting a session on the 30th where we have a representative from South Africa, from Zimbabwe and from Kenya, still talking on the human rights topic, but hearing what is happening from the, you know, from the various countries. So I think the more we are able to do that, the more we are also able to talk to with each other in terms of saying, hey, we are having this kind of a challenge or we're having this kind of an issue. What are you guys doing in your country? The more we're able to share with each other the stories, um, the, you know, the more powerful it is. Just final comment, talking about you know, people with disability, I was reminded that you know, in South Africa, as an example, the person that writes our, that writes our top tax laws in the country is a blind man. And very few people are actually aware of that. Here's somebody that sits somewhere in the office, interacts with the rest of the world around how can we ensure that our tax legislation, you know, is written in a manner that it talks to the challenges that we have in South Africa. And this is somebody who is blind. So already we know that there are these kind of, um, you know, um, opportunities and successes that we have. In our female wave of change, we have a lady who is deaf, who runs the National Deaf Society. And her challenge is always challenging organizations in terms of how do you ensure that in what you're doing, deaf people are taken into consideration. As an example, you know, a, a couple of years ago, she said to us, you know, when I go to the airports and you make all of these announcements, nobody thinks about me as a deaf person to say, how do I know that the flight has been changed from one gate to the other? And those things you and I take for granted, but for somebody like her, those are the things that impact, you know, that can determine whether she has a successful day or not. So it's, as I said earlier, it's really around how do we as female wave of change raise our voices in platforms where these issues are being talked about? Because now we are aware, now it is our responsibility to be able to take it to the various platforms. But as we take it to those platforms, we then also open the doors for those people that are coming from the communities that we're talking about. I think we have a very, very strong opportunity to be the ones that open the doors. We don't have to stand there once the doors are opened, but we have to be able to open and be able to bring them along with us so that they can influence in the various communities. I hope that answers you, uh, Jane. Yes, I'm, I'm well answered. Thank you so much, Tebelo. Thank you, thank you so much. In fact, at times we, we, we say these people are abled differently. We don't use the word disabled. We say they are able differently because of, most of them are very much skilled in, in one way or another. Recently, my girls, we were collecting data to map uh, the discrimination uh, against, um, we, to, we are supposed to come up with a country report on multiple discrimination against uh, women, especially those living with disabilities in the informal communities. And we were able to reach this girl who is actually She's been disabled. She's been like paralyzed for the last, uh, I think, eight years. 
and she's inside the house. She's she, at times she's not even brought outside. She's hidden in the house. And we know there are so many people who are ashamed of, of their children who are disabled. There are so many people who are like, you know, I don't want people to see this child or maybe this child is an embarrassment to me. So this is a very child with a very clear mind. And uh, what my girls uh, told me is that she was very excited when she saw them. She was like, these are my guests. And then, you know, they had their good time together. At the end of the day, she was left in that bed in the corner in their house. So what can we tell, like, parents who are still hiding their children uh, who are abled differently? You know, they are abled differently. They may not have their legs. They may not have their hands. may not have their eyes. But they are abled differently. I think it's, it's um, and I'll, I would like to also give Mami Von a chance to, to also respond to that question. But I think it's, it, you know, we talk about in female wave of change, we talk about feminine energy and feminine values. And it, I think what's important is being able to, to help and to guide and to hold the women who are in these situations and remind them of the fact that they have played a very big role in bringing that child into this world and remind them of the, the femininity that they bring into the space by looking after the child, but also in remind them of the joy because you know, there's also an element of thinking of people who are able differently as not being able to bring joy. And yet when you talk to the parents who have these children, they will tell you about a different joy that they are learning in, that they have in, in, in their lives. Um, and, and in talking to those mothers, the more of those mothers we speak to, the more of those mothers we encourage to be able to share their feminine energy, the feminine values that they have used to be able to bring up these children, the more it influences not only that family, but the community. And, and when the community as a whole, as you know, you know in, in, in Africa, we still have these stigmas because then we think somebody that's differently abled, you know, there's been witchcraft and there's been all sorts of things that are not actually correct because scientifically we now know why some, you know, some children are born under certain conditions. And it's really around how do we slowly take away this tag that, that communities give to their mothers. It's almost like the tag that parents have when they have children who have albinism. And, and in certain countries, you know, you get sh shocked that these children are being, are being killed because people think that they are witches. And you're saying, but here are differently abled people that bring different, we talk about diversity, embracing diversity in, in female wave of change. Embracing diversity means embracing people who are differently abled. Mami Vaughn, your, your, your comment on that? Yes, thank you, Etivelo. I, I think uh, you have shared uh, so many important things that are critical. What I would add is that let's go deeper and find out what created that negative attitude, that stigma? What is the source? And then when we know the, the thinking and the beliefs around that, that's what we need to work on. And you've said a mouthful that we need to change the thinking about uh, the people who've got different uh, disabilities. Let us also work on changing the attitude and the behavior. And for me, one thing that can do that is that advocacy is sharing uh, those stories, positive stories of what great things uh, you've already shared already about what uh, some deaf people or blind people can do. And I think we need to get all those great stories from across the countries. And over and above that, we need also to, to reflect and see that what are the resources that are available that we can uh, uh, use uh, to, to support uh, people? For instance, you remember we shared the story uh, of a woman who abandoned her role as an engineer just to be at home with her child with disabilities and even created and innovated uh, healing solutions and the child today can hear, can speak, can do all of that. So maybe Let's not be observers also as then uh, as women and take action, collaborate and coordinate. In that way, I think uh, there will be a lot of change. But I think uh, the stigma 
and those uh, cultural uh, values that don't work anymore. So those also need to be challenged. So the rights of the people with different uh, disabilities just need to be respected and to be honored. Let's continue to find ways and lead that change, as we've said. Thank you so much, Mami Von. So we should tell our stories to inspire others. That is very, very powerful, very powerful. And these women should come out to listen to these stories so that they know that they are not alone and there are people who have made it through thick and thin. So yeah. women rights are human rights. The famous quote by Hillary Clinton in 1985 in Beijing. What are you saying about that? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, Jane, so that just touches the core because it reminds us on something very basic that we were all born free with our rights and with dignity. So how we got lost uh, to violate all of that or to overlook it or not to take it seriously is what we need to research and deal with because if we come from that way that the starting point is that we are all human and we all are born with these rights and we all have that freedom to be who we are and so let's find let's find the mantra that will will shake the world we know that in, in africa so we worked so well in our history to liberate ourselves just from the core messages that were sent worldwide. As a little girl, I just knew that your power is ours, we're told from an early, early age, a man lang away to. And you know, let our Africa will come back. I've listened also of the stories of Jama Uhuru everywhere else. So let's find us, let's find a way that will share knowledge, inspire people, but edge action as well and that power of belief. And maybe just one thing, do people with different abilities and everybody else in our countries know their rights? Do they know their human rights? Do they know their policies? Can't we take action there and create awareness and drive knowledge and education about to know your rights? I know in South Africa, that is done so much even children we've got a child line where children can call that they are abused they are looking after so many children who were even sexually abused by their own parents and all of that so let's create also um the system the communication channels communication channels but how do you even uphold your human rights if you don't know what they are mm. and we have in most countries, all these constitutions and policies and all that, but unless we translate that into action, unless we see that breathing life and making a positive change to those who are suffering, then we would have done a, a something. So let's find ourselves. We know um, how in so many um, countries that they find something that is simple. Let's not complicate it. Find something simple, collaborate, interact and make impact isn't it a rwanda move there uh, from genocide uh, to greatness just keeping rwanda clean so what is it that you would like to do as united countries in africa at least something that will be remembered for that in 2018 there was the jane there was an ingen there was a tibelo and if it wasn't for them this would not have changed. Simplified, we've seen uh, in South Africa how women in 1956 um, just focused on one thing, that we're not going to be carrying any document that is even given a title, stupid, dumb path. We're going to change that. So what is that one thing? Where is it aching? Where would we like to make a difference? What legacy would we like to leave behind? So that also we practice what we preach as the female way of change to say there is power in women. It can be awakened and we can take action and uh, be in charge of the change and be the change that we'd like to see to ourselves and others. 
Hey, that is so powerful. Something simple and act on it. That is very, very powerful. And it summarizes the, you know, the quotation that I use, a quote that I use so much that says, do what you can with what you have right where you are. You know, not waiting for somebody else to come and tell you, not waiting for something else to be able to change what you have. Thank you so much for bringing that up. I'll share with you a little story about how it has been in Kenya uh, just this month. We are uh, still mourning uh, a 26-year-old girl who was killed by, she was kidnapped and killed, you know, seven months pregnant, stabbed, eight stabs. And um, the governor, uh, one governor in Kenya is being accused, like he's in court right now, he's been arrested uh, for this. He actually, he was a lover to this uh, girl, so the girl is not yet buried. And then we're also talking about um, a young girl who was coming from school and she was kidnapped. She was the daughter to uh, one of the magistrates. She was kidnapped. She disappeared for around one week and then she was killed. They broke her legs. She was badly tortured. And this is a nine-year-old girl, which is just terrible. Today, we woke up to this uh, young girl who like was again murdered yesterday, just found dead. So, and the other day, we were also talking about a young woman who just came from South, South uh, Sudan the other day, and she was found murdered in her house, not very far uh, from uh, Kibera here, but uh, some a place called Milimani. So it has really been tough for Kenyan women. Women don't feel safe. Women don't know where they can be safe. And we don't understand why just women are targeted by this. I don't know what you can tell Kenyan women or just Kenyan men. Can we talk to them? I'm sure that not women are killing these, these, these women. You know, like this is a pregnant woman, seven months pregnant. She was a lover to one of the, the, the governors. And it has been proven that the baby that she was carrying uh, belonged to the man. But she was stabbed to death, killed in cold blood. You know, a pregnant woman stabbed eight times. A nine-year-old girl tortured, her legs broken, you know. So what, what do we tell these men? What do we tell Africans, like Kenyans? What is happening? Why should women be targeted at a defenseless baby? It's like a, a baby who cannot defend herself, you know. And it's very unfortunate that it's happening in this month when we are talking about human rights. What are we saying? That is hard to breaking a uh, Jane. In fact, as we we sharing, I can just uh, feel, you know, my heartbeat. But on the other note, we've started the right thing to do. This story that you're sharing is a very touching story and it happens in more, many countries in Africa. What is different is that now we are not talking statistics. Because where we've got lost, the more you say five women have been killed or 100 people don't really know the essence and the pain. So we on the right path in that we're sharing the stories authentically as they are. And let us then collaborate and find out the solution. But I'm a believer that um, also when we don't exclude parents in this conversation, because the question I always ask that these men and boys and sons that grow up to be so hard and so, so cruel to us, we raised them. So what happened there? What needs to change? What has gone wrong? So let's go back here to our values. And I believe in faith uh, that whatever you, your faith is, there must be something that centers you, something that guides you, something that gives you the principles and something that directs you, that warns you that you're not on the right path. And maybe there's a, a different a agenda that we need also to be dealing with. Why so much anger? Why so much hatred? Because I can only believe that men are doing all these things because they don't love themselves. Because if you love yourself, if you value life, 
then why are you doing what you're doing to people who are actually incubators of life because women incubate life. Mm -hmm. So power of story, power of sharing, let us bring this a secret yet a mind breaking uh, incidences. Let us bring them to the public, engage, find solutions, and where people have changed, let's share also stories of hope. Because I believe that uh, the same way as like we're able to deal with oppression, with colonization, with apartheid, then the call of the time is, to, is, is life, the right to life, and our, our dignity that is being uh, tempered with every second. So let's address that and not get tired and focus. Yeah. So thank you so much. Before we give our parting shots, I know Tebelo is leaving in a short while. Mm -hmm. Editor just walked into my office and I'll just give her two minutes to answer my question, the question that I prepared for her. So I hope you understand. So uh, this is Editor, Editor, Editor Alan. <laughs> Okay, so editor, what is the role of women uh, human rights defenders in ensuring that women are not left behind? And I want you to like think about safety of women. That is what I want you to think about. Please talk to us. Okay, thank you very much. Hi everyone. Hi. Sorry, because my phone is just a mess, but I'm grateful I'm here and I'll talk about the role of us as the women human rights defenders to ensure that at least girls are getting safety in the grounds. Um, first of all, we are creating aware, awareness and we are really empowering women so that they can understand their rights. After understanding, uh, after understanding your rights, the next thing you're supposed to do is to implement these rights on your own. Because when you're speaking about equality and you don't want to be in the equal position, it will be difficult for development. So. After speaking about rights, we ensure that these rights are implemented at grassroots level. Because we have good policies in Kenya, but the difference is they, we, we don't implement our policies. So it makes women vulnerable. Another thing that we do is making sure that we have a strong pillar of solidarity. Like when Jane is affected, it's, it's also affecting me as editor. If another girl, like the recent case, a girl being killed, in Migori County. It was difficult for us because of this solidarity. We were feeling this girl, and we ensure that this girl at least, even if she's dead, she's dead today, we are pushing for her justice in court. It is not easy, but at least we can smile today because the governor was arrested. Yeah. Two minutes. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much, editor. At least you were able to add your voice to the conversation. Tebelo, I know you're living in a short while. I want to give you the chance to just give us your parting shot. We have appreciated your participation and it has been very, very important to us. And I'm glad that we are having this recorded, uh, England. So we'll be able to share with our people. Like I'm um, told, uh, Florence is trying to get her way to my office. <laughs> I don't understand why she's not able to connect from her side. So she's still going to get the recording. So Tebelo, please give us, tell us something before you leave. Thank you, Jane. Firstly, let me just say, hi, editor. It's good to see you again. <laughs> and, um, you know, for, for those of you that don't know editor, when I was there in Kenya, this lady gave me so much um, confidence. She gave me, she, you know, she touched my heart because for the first time, I think I saw young women getting involved in the political structures at the grassroots levels. And that made me start to think about, you know, here in South Africa and other countries to say, how and where are we encouraging young women to get involved, you know, in the political structures? Because if the voices of women are not heard at the local structures, how are the voices going to be heard even at the most senior or more complex, complex structures? So I think that was really um, something powerful that I enjoyed there. My, 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 my other part in short, um, Jane, would be we have the power of social media. We have an opportunity in our generation to be able to share the positive stories, to be able to share 
um, the successes to be able to share uh, platforms that can help you know young girls and and um, I know that in South Africa we have a group of young people that have created uh, an app and this app is meant to be used by young people if they feel and I'll find the name of the app and I'll share it on the female wave of change platform but if they're starting to feel that wherever they are they are not feeling safe um, you know, or they feel that they are going to be um, attacked, there is an app that they can be able to utilize. So I think if, you know, you keep asking, what can we do practically? The more we hear about these things, the more we, we hear about these platforms that are available, we are the mothers, we are the aunts, let's share them. Because it may be an app that was started in South Africa, but if we tell the Kenyans, if we tell Zimbabweans, if we tell Nigerians and Zambians about it, they may also be able to take it and apply it, you know, in, in your countries. Similarly as what you did with Mpesa in Kenya. We all know that Mpesa was started in Kenya, but we are able to use Mpesa here in our country. And it's all because people started sharing, you know, what's available. We've got apps of young people, very young as in, you know, in their teens. Again, the same thing. If something happens, it's connected to the police and how can the police support? And on that note, I want to challenge Ruth because Ruth is our IT guru who's joined us here in the session to start sharing that information with us because she probably knows more about what are these apps so that we can be able to help. So let's help young people to use social um, uh, media Let's help women to use social media to be able to develop, to be able to be safe in their environments, to be able to be better and, and be able to share with each other um, across the world. Let's not only use it to share that, you know, our celebrities, you know, this is what they've gained. Let's help them understand that there are apps that are there that are meant to help them as young girls and as young women. So I think that's really what we can do. We, we really have a wonderful opportunity. Every time I engage on the female wave of change platform, I walk away thinking, oh my God, there are so many opportunities. It's about how do we align them? How do we integrate them so that the world starts hearing the voices of the women in Africa and the feminine values and the feminine energy that we want the world to be able to experience. We are one of the first you know, continents that are able to share that. And I know the more we get, um, you know, women from other countries to join us, you know, in this, in this crusade, the more our voices are even going to be so much stronger. I also just want to acknowledge that we have somebody from Zambia that's joined us because we're looking very strongly at uh, also growing the network in Zambia. And, and, you know, the sooner we can get Zambia, Lesotho, Namibia, you know, in, Tanzania, Uganda, the more we can be able to take it to the rest of the continent. Jane and the team in Kenya, I am so proud of what you have been able to achieve. Um, you have had a week-long celebration of human rights. Uh, some of us have only had one day. You've done a week-long. Really, really proud. Again, for me, that just brings in the feminine energy that we can be able to bring together. And I wish you luck for the rest of the session, the rest of the week. And I'm sure we'll meet again on the platform of the th on, the, on the 30th of September. Ingun and the team, Mami Vaughn, Ruth, everybody that's on the platform, thank you so much for this opportunity. This has really, really been an awesome session. And the lady from, uh, from Zambia, and then her name is uh, Situmbaku. Situmbaku, we're happy to see you. We're happy you've joined us. We look forward to working with you further. As, uh, did I say it right, uh, uh, Ruth? Situmbaku, ne? Perfect. Thank you, ladies. I have another meeting to go to. Mwah, love you. Let's keep growing the wave and creating a feminine value and a feminine energy in our continent. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you so much, Tebelo. Uh, wishing you the best. Yeah, so uh, Florence just walked in. Florence Sebo. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, she came physically. I don't know whether she's not digital enough, but this is interesting. Yeah, so uh, Florence, I hope we still have time to listen to Florence. Yeah, so Florence is our national, she's the coordinator, the national coordinator for the SDG Forum, Sustainable Development Goals Forum here in Kenya. So having her on board is very, very important for this conversation.
So I'll just ask Florence the question that I wanted to ask her earlier. I'm not letting her go. Ruth, welcome. Thanks. Happy to see you. Oh God, this late comers. Okay. So we were, to, we were talking about engaging women and leaving no woman behind. We know women have been left behind. Women living in formal communities are talking about not being engaged not being given an opportunity to be part of decision-making processes. And we're also talking about women living with disabilities, especially women in the slums. So we are talking about, like we know that these women have been left behind uh, in many ways. In our, um, uh, our transport system, we, as we construct our roads, we don't take into consideration that we have people who live with physical disabilities and they need their own paths to be able to, to be, to be uh, mobile. And then we're also talking about like not being able to access brains and hearing aids for people who are like the people that are deaf and are people who are blind. And then we're also talking about women who have children who are living with disabilities. The women who are not able, like there are not special considerations for them. Like when people are on the queue to get something, Nobody considers that we have some woman somewhere who is like leaving that kid in the house who needs her assistance because the child is, is living with disability. What can you say, Florence? How do we ensure that women are not left behind in this sustainable development goal conversation? Thank you, Jane. And uh, hi, ladies. Apologies, I am very late for walking in late. Uh, I was telling Jane, I had an emergency. I, have, uh, I had to do some unpaid care work. <laughs> Uh, somebody in my family is unwell, and so uh, I had to do that for them today in the morning because uh, the caretaker is not there. So, uh, ladies, it's good to uh, join. Uh, apologies for uh, just coming in late, uh, and thanks, Jane, uh, for the enthusiasm and for the uh, continuous arrangement uh, to have this kind of conversation. And as Jane said, uh, we've uh, been uh, steering uh, the conversation here in Kenya to ensure that. Uh, uh, we ensure that women are not left behind, especially on issues of double discrimination. Uh, we're in a country where it's very unfortunate that uh, most of our women are not just uh, discriminated, but are facing multiple discriminations. And uh, for us, as uh, the Sustainable Development Goals Kenya Forum, and uh, for us also having uh, a, a lead group on uh, Goal 5 uh, on uh, gender equality, uh, we've started this quite these uh, conversations uh, within the face of inequality campaign uh, that is talking about how do we ensure that women are not just uh, all, you know, like not uh, just the whole bracket of women, but especially those that are really marginalized, those that are facing uh, issues of uh, double discrimination at the forefront of uh, uh, interventions that are being done, uh, not just by uh, development partners or civil society groups, uh, but also uh, to ensure that uh, our, our governments, uh, our policies uh, give priority to us, these particular women. And how do we even uh, um, uh, create a space for them, a platform for them to start this conversation, to be able to participate in this kind of conversation, for them to voice uh, their voices? Because for a very long time, uh, like here in Kenya, women living uh, in, for example, in uh, informal settlements, women in different places, in rural areas, uh, we find that a lot of them uh, have a lot of challenges and most people will just maybe focus on one aspect of their challenges and not really focusing on what uh, they're really facing. And uh, if we are to achieve the sustainable development goals, uh, we have to start uh, right now to ensure that uh, all these kind of conversations are really at the forefront and women have a, a good platform, their voices are heard, their voices are streamlined in policies and also uh, we teach them how to organize themselves because I believe uh, it's, it's time for us to organize better. It's time for us uh, to empower uh, this, uh, this, uh, our women and, and to ensure that uh, they have uh, the different spaces and the different opportunities for them to speak for themselves and for them to also understand what it means uh, for them to uh, be in these particular processes that are there, uh, that talk about uh, empowering them, that talk about changing their lives, that talk about uh, uh, giving them and their, their children a better future. So I think uh, for us, uh, we're in a place of uh, trying to be practical 
in terms of what what needs to be done, uh, especially in situations uh, uh, where women are really really discriminated and uh, are marginalized and are not at uh, the forefront of uh, the different uh, conversations. And so, uh, with the campaign, uh, we are uh, and the interventions we are seeking to do here is we are trying to ensure that uh, our voices, that uh, the voices that we collect from the different uh, women, uh, we ensure that uh, their voices uh, uh, get to the relevant uh, places or platforms, but so, so that we can have uh, a better conversation, so that we can have a better. Uh, strategy in terms of what needs to be done at different levels and so I'm really really excited and I look forward uh, to engaging uh, the different uh, countries and for us to even share experiences uh, for us we look forward to uh, learning uh, from others uh, what could work best uh, even as we initiate these uh, conversations but also to share what is working best within our quarters and so uh, we look forward to hearing more from all of you and also to uh, sharing and uh, disseminating what is coming out from the different women and uh, from the different uh, women uh, intervention uh, strategies but more importantly uh, how do we change uh, uh, women's life uh, from uh, those that are really, really discriminated and left behind. So I think I would uh, maybe just stop there for now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Florence. That was very, very important. I'm glad you joined in. We always say better late than never. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, what you have talked about, we have talked about what was coming out of this meeting so prominently is that we should have like our voice. We should bring out our voice so loudly and we should also get away with partnering, we should like invest in partnerships so that we are able to learn from others. So today is a very important day, uh, the, Interna the Global Action Day. So tell us about this. Why do you think this is very important when we are talking about women and discrimination? Oh, thank you. Uh, I believe uh, today being uh, the third anniversary of the, since uh, we adopted the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, I believe that it's, it's quite important uh, for different countries, especially, especially developing countries, uh, to take stock of uh, the initiatives and the interventions that the different uh, multi-stakeholder groups have taken uh, within their countries in terms of uh, uh, implementation of Sustainable Development Goals, but also the reporting and the review. And so uh, it's time for us uh, to take uh, stock and uh, more importantly to ensure that uh, the conversation of uh, gender equality is not at the margins, but it's at the forefront of the different uh, interventions being done by the different stakeholders. For example, uh, it's good to understand, for example, what is the government, what are our governments, uh, not just the national governments, uh, but the different layers of government. Like in Kenya, we have the national and the county governments. And also uh, to ensure development partners, conversation, uh, private sector, media, academia, and so forth. How do we ensure that moving forward, uh, women, uh, women's roles and uh, uh, what the, the, the needs or the what we've identified, the priorities of, uh, among women are the center front or the, the front of uh, the interventions of sustainable development goals within the national priorities. I think it's time for us uh, to uh, take stock of uh, what we've done or what has been achieved. And then uh, if it's in terms of policies, gaps, whatever that uh, has gaps in terms of interventions or implementation and reviewing, uh, for us to highlight those and uh, to ensure that moving forward to the next tier of implementation, uh, we can uh, change the narrative of what is going on. Because I believe uh, if we don't do this, uh, our national government or uh, the different stakeholders sometimes are not obliged to uh, give us this kind of space or to ensure our conversations at the forefront. So it's up to us uh, to be vibrant and to be strategic in terms of uh, ensuring uh, that which we believe in, our priorities are well, are well uh, sort of articulated or are well uh, implemented within our systems. And so uh, for us uh, today, uh, we are looking at it as, as a very strategic day uh, for us to ensure uh, and uh, identify what are the gaps uh, so far within the implementation process and how to better that uh, process. And so uh, we are calling upon uh, the different uh, women-led organizations uh, to uh, come out in terms of uh, um, taking stock of the, the three years of implementation and giving uh, recommendations or giving highlights of what has uh, gone on so far. And more importantly, uh, for them 
uh, to be at the forefront of the whole conversation, to be strategically involved and aligned. And so even at a regional level, I think uh, it's a very important uh, opportunity for us to also take stock at a regional level and also at a global level within the different processes of SDG implementation and to ensure that uh, the issues of women, especially uh, inequalities and women discrimination at the forefront and the, the mechanisms to address uh, uh, what needs to be addressed at a country level. Because uh, we always believe that uh, implementation uh, should or is key at a national level. So whatever that has been, uh, whatever that comes out of the uh, global spaces, of the regional spaces, how do we ensure articulation of that at national level? So this is a conversation that uh, is quite, quite key. And uh, even as the different other SDG, uh, different uh, goals uh, also take stock, uh, it's, it's, it's quite important for us to encourage our different uh, 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 women-led organizations to do the same and to come out with bold statements and bold recommendations and actions that could uh, give us a way forward within as we go to the next uh, year, the fourth year of SDG implementation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Florence. Thanks so much. I think I'd like to invite Ruth just to give us a short comment and then we'll give our closing remarks. This has, this has been very, very powerful. Ruth, welcome. Hi. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Engan. Thank you, my Von. Um, thank you, Jane. Um, as an able-bodied person, I must admit that I really think about a disabled person. Um, I am all about inclusivity, but only until last week Friday when somebody handed me a business card that had braille on it so that a blind person could read it. It made me realize just how closed-minded we, we all are um, when it's something that doesn't necessarily affect us. I don't have anybody close to me that's um, disabled um, in my immediate family or even in my extended family. So for me, it is... Um, something that I have to actually consciously become aware of. Um, and that is why um, I'm appreciative of hearing a conversation like this because it increases my awareness um, as a human being and as a member of this platform as well, it also increases my reach. Um, I, I have worked personally with um, and I've had friends that have alb albinism um, and those people are actually legally blind, so they can't drive. So they have a different level of challenges that they have to face every day. Um, and um, the one guy I worked with at a huge insurance company was actually an actuary. Very, very intelligent man, but he could barely see because he's legally blind and he's um, an albino, meaning that he also suffered a lot like from his peers and the way he was treated and mistreated and whatever. Um, I also know of a case of a young lady that works um, at the same insurance company that's blind. And she actually goes to work with her guide dog. But the company had to make a lot of changes to accommodate her to actually go and work there. Um, and that is the reality we face. The world is built by able-bodied able people. And as a result, we don't actually stop to consider the people that aren't able-bodied. And um, that is something that we absolutely have to change. And a platform like this obviously allows us to actually start becoming aware and those of us that are in the forefront of leading these conversations can actually start spreading awareness to say, guys, we actually need to start including other people that are not like us, that are different from us. Um, so thank you. Um, that's, that's all I can say for now. Thank you so much, Ruth, for sharing. And as we've said before, is that sharing stories is very, very important. We are inspired by stories that are shared. We've also talked about being able to like create systems that can allow people to access resources to be able to to disseminate or share information about uh, people living with living with disabilities and also to get everybody to know that it's something that that is with us and as mommy von said earlier is that they also each and every person have we all have our rights and we are born with these rights. We don't have to, there are not things that we, we, we can buy or we can say that, you know, there's someone who has more rights than the other. These are things that we are born with. We all have a right to live a violence-free life. We also have, a, we all have a right to coexist and to exist in this world. So Mami Vaughn, I'll give you just a few minutes to give us uh, your parting shot. 
and then uh, Florence will give us a parting shot and then maybe I'll, I'll just conclude and take it back to England. Mami Vaughan, welcome. Thank you so much, Jane, and welcome to each and every person who has joined us. No, now you know that uh, if you needed to be in this conversation, so there will always be an opportunity. From me, I would say, I think we are on the right path. Then let's just stay focused and not lose the momentum. And what I am beginning to see and loving is women taking charge and owning the pain because people who own their pain become healthy and they can achieve whatever they would like. And I would like also to delve deeper in understanding a, a disability because sometimes we forget invisible disability. What happens to people with brain damages, uh, people who've got dyslexia, those are subtle things. So let us uh, expand the scope of disability or research and understand and engage because when you dialogue with people, then their voice and their own needs, you can feel their pain and they can be the solution. And I want to emphasize that the more images and voices of group that we share and broadcast and take out there, the more people will be aware and they will also be inspired to act and do something. So let's get uh, role models. And I must say, Jane and everyone, they, you are role models. You, you, you're teaching the, the, the globe that uh, you know there is power and there is so much creativity and innovation in Africa. And women, we sometimes forget that we've got strength because most of us are here and doing what we do, but it doesn't mean that we had everything that we need. We were raised by strong women who had faith, who had values, who believed, and who trusted that, you know, the path that they are putting us on will change the world, and it did. So let us do the same thing, and I know that we will grow together from strength to strength. I liked also the idea that let's change the script. Let's tell a new story. Let's come up with a new narrative, the story that women pull each other down and women wait for things to happen. They are dependent. Let's change things around by doing it for ourselves, supporting each other. And what I like more about the female wave of change is that on that ride, you give others a lift and they get empowered along the way. So Jane, you've rightly said that we are never alone. So there is power in unity. And thank you so much to Ingen for, for, for the dream and the vision, which we all owning, we believing in it, so we acting on it, and in that way we will achieve. So I'm just looking forward to greater things and thanks to each and everyone for your contribution, for your knowledge, for your skills, for sharing your stories. And let's continue, the story is powerful. Thanks so much, Mam Yvonne, for your powerful words of wisdom. I'm taking away so much. I can listen to you forever, you know. <laughs> you see, women sometimes forget that they are powerful. Yeah. They, they, oh, women sometimes forget that they have strength. Hmm. That is very interesting. That is very, very interesting. So we should always get something to remind us that we have the strength. And this is what partnership can bring. Florence. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wow, I'm so inspired uh, by the conversation and I, I'm very glad that I joined. Um, so for me, it's just uh, to urge all of us, uh, let's uh, organize better. Let's uh, ensure that no woman is left behind. Uh, let's uh, have the heart to ensure that uh, we do that which we need to do uh, as women leaders, as women, you know, um, uh, whatever position you're in, I believe that all of us have an opportunity to inspire uh, those that are left behind. So mine is just uh, to see us organize better, to see us having better strategies, and uh, to be empowered to have, as they say, knowledge is power. So I, I believe that uh, there's so much that uh, we can do as women. So let's do it. Thank you. 
Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Florence. Thank you so much, Ruth. Thanks, Mami Von. And thanks to everyone who have joined us in this conversation and the people who have been able, the people who have been able to listen to us. That was a powerful conversation. And uh, yeah, to me, this month have been very, very successful looking back into our rights as human beings and still to our, into our rights as women has been very, very important. I have learned so much and through collaboration, I hope I'm still going to learn so much. Back to you, Ingon. Thank you very much, uh, Jane, and thank you all the others. This has been a very powerful event and I hope you don't mind me saying just a couple of more words. Uh, because first, I really want to thank the, the team in Kenya who has been doing so much work uh, in the last uh, two weeks. It is really amazing to see you uh, move mountains, you know, to really make things happen. And uh, that's, that's really fantastic. And we are doing it together because I, you know, we see Regina who joined us uh, just a couple of minutes ago. But, uh, you know, it, Regina also has done a lot of work. So thank you for that. Um, I love it that uh, the team from, from, South, uh, from South Africa has been present uh, today, that she joined us, uh, that they joined us, and uh, you know, the powerful speeches, the powerful words of Tabello and, uh, and Mami Von, thank you so much for, uh, for always your inspiration and your, uh, your wisdom. Uh, what I would like to add is because, you know, we are going, we, we have recording this session and uh, we will put it online. What is very important is that it is a global platform that is going to watch this. And it's always a global platform that, that will see your, your challenges, your worries, but they can also join you in uh, finding the solutions or you know, bringing in new ideas. So I do believe that it is, uh, it's very important to not just only focus on what is happening in Kenya, not just only focus on what is happening, happening on, the, on the African continent, but I do invite you to share all these stories online so that everyone sees what, what, what is happening. Because, you know, I've been in this panel with the women from Pakistan a couple of days ago. They are facing similar challenges. And it might be that they have been finding solutions that you're still looking for. So share everything and, you know, discuss the things, what is going on with this, this, on this global platform with the global women, because I do believe that is important. Um, uh, there's, one, there's just one thing I wanted to add, and I've been looking at that statement uh, behind Jane on the wall. Uh, for quite some time now, that is uh, uh, by Marion Wills Williamson. Uh, it is our deepest fear that we are powerful beyond measure. You know, one way, one woman can make a difference. Together, we can change the world. So let's create waves and uh, let's make change, change happen. And I love this. Uh, what has been happening on for human rights? And thank you, thank you, thank you again for everything that you have been sharing. I love the women from the African continents. There is a certain power in you that, you know, I'm not even able to understand. And I really love it. And um, thank you for sharing. Okay. So I think we're going to finish off by this. Or Jane, is there anything you want to add? Wait, I have to unmute you. I'm not able to unmute you. We're not hearing you. So thank you. You can. Oh, I want to say yes. that. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> oh. So what I'm saying is that um, let's ensure that no woman is left behind. Let's just make sure that we have everybody and we are working together. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. And we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.